Hello YouTube viewers, Chris here again today. Uh, this time I'm going to be pulling apart the A10M 2 into 1 hot end and explaining a bit about uh, how the backflow discs work in here because somebody happened to ask about them uh, after I mentioned about them in a video. So I'll just get started. You're going to need a star head screwdriver, any one, 2 mil Allen key. 1.5 mil Allen key. I use Team Integi or Team Integi uh, Allen key screwdrivers with replaceable shafts. Just because when they get stripped, I just take these and use the shafts for something else and just replace it for like two or three dollars. So, then deal. Seven mil wrench. Get a real one. Throw out the one that they have because it's junk. And they give you, and you're gonna need one of these. Start with the sensitive bits first, take off the thermistor, thermistor, whoops, I'll stop calling it that. There's no E in it, so it's not a meister. Allen key. Now, take off the 1.5 Allen key. We'll take off the heater cartridge. I'm going to take, take it out, not take it off. Okay, next, we'll do these. This is where the two comes into play. People refer to these as heat creep screws, but really they don't creep as much heat from here up to here as most people think. And most people that do think that either haven't tried uh, to see how much it actually does, because if you buy one of these, this is a Canadian alternative to some crazy expensive fluke one that you can get in the States. You can probably get here in Canada too, but this MotoMaster or Mastercraft one you can get from Canadian Tire, or we like to call it crappy tire, but it comes with uh, a thermocouple as part of one of the tools that come with it, or the probes. So you can stick this in here, and you can try with the screws in, you can try with the screws out, different temperatures, and you can see for yourselves. We're talking about one or two degrees, and that's probably, the one or two degrees is probably the tolerance on the machine, or just a really small variance, so you're really not going to notice it that much. I haven't. There's another video on uh, YouTube about it, uh, that's done by a way more experienced guy than me, and he explains it a lot better than me. Next, take out your nozzle. Go back to the 1.5 mil Allen key, then you take out these grub screws in the side of the block. There's two, one on either side. And then just this slides out. This is one piece now, this black one. The silver ones that come on the A10M from the factory is actually two separate pieces here. Right where this slice is, this would be sliced all the way through and it would be two separate pieces. I don't like that. I like this design better because when you put this in here, that's it. It's just done and over with. You know, with the one with the two, you have to line it up because if this side pushes up a little bit more than the other side and this side pushes down or whatever else, then this is all crooked like that or crooked like that or like really bad. So this, this is, is a nice alternative. I like how they did this. We don't need anything from here because that's just what you see. It's just broad and tube comes through here, comes out there, goes into there. That's it. What you guys are looking for is right here. This is the hot end part, I guess. The real working bits of it. What happens is there's backflow discs in here. Filming coming down from this side, filming coming down from this side. If this side is pushing at 90%, this side's pushing at 10%, the excess pressure from here might actually try to push stuff back up this or stop this from coming out. And then you got a jam. They work. I've never had that issue. The only time I ever had an issue was when I took the Bowden tube out and ran one single color thinking that the disc would stop filament from, from this side coming down and going all the way up and then crawling up this tube. Well, it actually crawled up the tube and was like three quarters of the way up it. I found that out by trying to put my Bowden tube back in it and run a second color after printing one color for like, you know, three or four prints and then all of a sudden it was like way up to here. So that was a no-no, don't do that. This design is actually really simple. People call it a complicated design. Mm, it's not really that complicated if you actually think about it. What this is is just a hole drilled here, a hole drilled here, one hole drilled here. And what they do is they drill this hole here that goes right through to the other side. So there's three grub screws here, three grub screws here. What that does is that blocks the cross drilled hole. So essentially what it is is three holes connected by a cross drilled hole. So if this was a hole, or if this screwdriver was the actual hole, 
and you were to put it like this, it would essentially be just like that, right in the center. So the bottom of these holes meet up with this, and then the top of this hole meets up with there. So it would come down like this, not go all the way over there, but go down, fill up a little bit, over, uh, over, down. So quite an easy design, it's not that complicated. What you guys are here to see is the backflow disc. So we'll just take those out. These are just going to come off like real easy. Yours are not going to do that. Mine do because I've made a previous video and then realized that these were held in with yellow Loctite, which is permanent until heat's added, which kind of makes it like a pain in the ass because you can't heat this up outside of the machine by using the machine. So therefore, you're going to have to use a torch. Um, I used one of those butane torches uh, for... I don't know what you would use it for, really. Um, I don't know, but those small, small little propane pocket torches. I tried it on here, and it took forever to try to get one side out. I like sat here for like 30 seconds to where I, like the lighter got hot and started to smell like melting plastic before I could get one of these off. I just used one of those small little one-pound propane tanks with a normal torch top on it, and just sat there for like three seconds, and boom, it just came right the heck off. So. I suggest flipping this upside down, screwing these off like this, setting them down. There, this is what we're looking for. This is what everybody's here to see, or I was requested to show. I know you can't really see them in there because my camera for some reason doesn't want to freaking focus. But here, they're small. I mean, like small, small. Yeah, really tiny orifice in it, like maybe 5.6 mil, 0 0.6, 0 0.5 mil, something like that. And there's about eight holes in each one. There, and another eight holes in this one. One on each side. Those are the backflow discs. Those sit in the very end of this. So when this, sitting here with the little pointy part, facing in towards the bottom with that facing up right like that it sits tight up against the back of here so what that's supposed to do is to stop excess pressure coming from this direction bleeding back up this way they do function so people say they mess with retraction I can see where that would happen but luckily so far I haven't had any problem with mine well that's me explaining the backflow discs uh, they are what they are. I don't really know what other information I can explain to you about them, but that's just them. So we're going to put them back in now. Put back upside down. Screw these little buggers back in. Yeah, this wrench is just... At, the, at its biggest size, just big enough to handle that. These I'm not going to thread like again because I want to be able to get them out, so I just snug them up, put this up into here, drop these two screws back and down inside, we'll call these the heat, scre heat creep screws, put those in there, tighten these up real quick, just until they just touch and they're a little bit snug, you don't want to tighten them too much because you might deform the block by by that I mean the angle between here and here and here and here you might crush it where this is closer than that don't want to do that put the nozzle in now it doesn't really matter when we'll go allen key little grub screw one By the way, nothing I use in these videos is sponsored or given to me for free. Everything is bought and personally. I'm just doing this out of like my personal choice. Something for me to do, you know, in this time of stupid coronavirus. Plus, you know, people need to know uh, what they want to know, right? If you want to know about something, just ask. I'll tell you if I know it. I'm not one of those people that were like, oh, well, just because I know it, you don't know it, I'm not going to tell you. But here we go, guys. 
put the heater cartridge back in, put the two screws in. Don't crank these down because you'll crush the metal inside, that right there, which will destroy that. Then you take your, oops, here, I'll get back on camera here. We'll take your thermistor, put that in, and get the screwdriver. And put that back in. Alrighty guys, well that's uh, this assembly assembly and some discussion about the backflow discs. Any other questions or things that I can review or take apart and show you guys? Or any other questions, just post it in the comments and I'll get back to answering it. Alright, thanks guys. Appreciate it.